Bach. I'm the owner and designated broker of Vanguard Platinum Real Estate. And uh, Michael told me that I needed to smile more, so I'm smiling. <laughs> anyway, what I am going to talk today about is property management and why you really want to have a property manager. <clears throat> um, there's a lot of people out there who have perhaps one rental home, maybe two, and I run into this a lot. Their attitude is, well, I've owned homes before. How hard can it be to do property management? <laughs> well, you know, you've had bank accounts before, too. Does that mean you're qualified to run a bank? Probably not. You have a Dremel in your garage. Does that mean you're qualified to do your own dental work? No, and if you're trying to do your own property management, the results are probably going to be about as painful. Why do I say that? There are three reasons why you want a property manager. First reason is tenants will make you crazy. They just will. <laughs> tenants will make you crazy. What you really want is you want somebody to act as a buffer between you and the tenant. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this because everybody's heard the horror stories. But just to give you an example, about six weeks ago, washing machine in one of my units went out. Tenant calls me, tell, tells me it filled up with water and now it won't do nothing. Okay, so I get a repair guy out there two days later. Repair guy looks at it and says, the machine shot, pump burned out, out, motor burned out, you need to replace it. Okay, so this is about two days after the tenant had called me to tell me that it burned out, maybe three. The next day, I get a text message from him and it says, hey, how am I going to be compensated for these clothes I had to throw out? What clothes? He says, well, the clothes that got all stinky from sitting in the water because the machine wouldn't drain. What? And I said, well, okay, let me, let me get this straight. The machine filled up with water, wouldn't drain, and you left your clothes in there for four days. And then you threw them away because they smelled funny. Yes. Okay, first of all, where's the receipt to tell me the value of the clothes you threw away? Second of all, where's the receipt for when you took them to the laundromat and tried to rewash them? Fourth, why didn't you take them out of the water? Hello? Okay, now the owner of that property happens to be a lawyer. Can you imagine the conversation between the owner and the tenant if that phone call had gone directly to the owner? Probably would have gotten really, really, it would have been fun to watch, I'll, I'll grant you that. But I'm there, I'm there to act as the buffer. So owners don't have to explain to people, no, I'm sorry, you won't be compensated for the clothes you left sitting in the water for four days by your own choice. Thanks, but no. That's reason number one. Number two is maintenance calls. Okay, maintenance calls are a big issue. If a toilet backs up at three o'clock in the morning, do you really want to get that phone call? No. Who does? That's why I do it. I'm there to, and, and more importantly, if you're a, just a regular homeowner, let's say you're in Colorado on vacation and your tenant calls you at three o'clock in the morning and says, my toilet's backed up, I don't know what to do. You're in Colorado. Do you know what to do? Probably not. That's why you want a property manager who will answer the phone at three o'clock in the morning and go, oh, toilet backed up? Okay, fine, I'll have somebody out there in an hour. It's that simple. So those are the two really obvious reasons why you want a property manager. The third reason, and this is the big one, this is what this is all about. The third reason I call compliance. Like I said, I get the comment a lot. I've owned houses before. How hard can property management be? This right here is the Arizona Landlord Tenant Act, the Residential Landlord Tenant Act. It is 29 pages. I had to cut the last page off and stick it right down there at the bottom. This is the bare minimum of what you have to know to do property management in this state and not get yourself all jammed up. It is 28 pages of legal gibberish and most of it is very counterintuitive. Most of this act puts the burden of responsibility on the owner and not the tenant. This act was written with the presumption that if you are a landlord, you have a higher 
threshold of knowledge than the person who is renting from you. That probably isn't the case, but that's how this law was written. So this is the bare minimum of what you need to know. Little things like, let's talk about maintenance calls. Maintenance calls, there's two kind of categories according to this act. One is a maintenance call, and then there's the emergency maintenance call. Well, what's an emergency maintenance call? How do you handle an emergency maintenance call? What provisions are in this act that stipulate how you have to react to an emergency maintenance call as opposed to a regular maintenance call? What emergency maintenance call is may change. If someone's air conditioning goes out on an 80 degree day, is that an emergency? No. If someone's air conditioning goes out on a 112 degree day, is that an emergency? Yes. And you better respond appropriately. If someone's toilet plugs up at 3 o'clock in the morning, is that an emergency? Depends. How many toilets are in the house? If there's only one, that's an emergency. So these are things you need to know just, just with this. This is just the state legislation. This is the, this is the mild stuff. Because probably the worst that will happen if you violate this is you'll get sued civilly. Okay? That's the mild version. Let's talk about the nasty stuff, like the Federal Fair Housing Act. Starting fines with that are about $25,000. The Arizona, well, there's also an Arizona House Fair Housing Act, but it's pretty much a mirror of the federal. So if, if you violate the federal, you've probably violated the state. So you get twice the fun. Americans with Disabilities Act. There isn't enough wall space in this room for me to put up the pages of those documents. There literally isn't. I can tell you, I don't, I am, I'm not allowed to give legal advice, but what I can tell you is there are certain protected classes that these acts <coughs> apply to. Those protected classes are race, color, national, or, national origin, religion, sex, familial status, or handicap. Now, familial status is one of the newer ones. They just added that a few years ago. And that means the status of the family. I see, I see other realtors violate that portion of it on a regular basis. The Federal Fair Housing Act applies to basically any home that is sold or rented. Um, there are some exceptions. If you're doing property management yourself, you do not have to worry about the Fair Housing Act unless you use a broker to advertise the property. So, and this is one I see a lot. Um, you've got a single rental property. Uh, your cousin Bobby just got his real estate license, just became a realtor, and he says, hey, you know, Uncle Bob, Uncle John, whatever, um, if you want, I'll put that on MLS to help you find some tenants you are now subject to the provisions in the Federal, Federal Fair Housing Act. Um, and it's, very, very, it's a very, very slippery slope. My, the owner that I have, who is a lawyer, he and I had a discussion about this. Because um, I was looking at one of his properties, his wife was there, and his wife is a school teacher, so she's used to thinking about kids. And she says to me, when you're advertising this, make sure you mention that this would be a great home for someone with kids, because it's right across from the green belt. And I said, absolutely not. I will not put that in my advertisement. And her husband, the lawyer, looked at me, and I said, ask him. If I put that in an advertisement, I have violated the Federal Fair Housing Act because I am discriminating, theoretically, against people who do not have children. Because my advertising is geared towards people who do. That's how slippery it is. I've seen uh, agents put in advertisements for properties. Great location, right next to bus, right, right next to the school bus stop. Boom, violation. So, and like I said, the, the fines start, start at $25,000. That's your first offense. They go up from there. One minute, thank you. 
So take a look at this and ask yourself, do you really want to sit down and read this entire thing and memorize it? If the answer is no and you have a rental property, you need to call me. If you know somebody who's doing their own property management, ask them, have they ever even heard of this? Most people who are doing their own property management don't even know this exists. They need my help because my job as a realtor, as a property management, really is risk avoidance. And I will tell you from experience, the biggest risk a landlord faces is him or herself. So, questions? <clears throat>